Hi Floss Tube, welcome to my channel. My name is Grace. I'm the Paisley Stitcher here on YouTube, Floss Tube, as well as Instagram. Welcome to my channel about cross stitch. This is Floss Tube number four, and today is Sunday, October 23rd, 2022. It's been a little bit of time. Work has been crazy. Fourth quarter is always the busiest time of year for me, work-wise. So I will be filming as I can. It feels like this time of year I'm working and cross-stitching and working and working and cross-stitching to stay sane. Um, I want to thank everyone for such nice comments, the kindness and encouragement from my last floss tube. Actually, all, all of them. Um, I just love all the nice comments. Thank you so much for taking the time to comment and encourage me. I really appreciate it. So today I want to talk about some finishes. I want to show you two antique samplers. I have a save the stitches. I want to talk to you about losing my stitchy mojo. I have a new start. I have a ditch. And we have a winner of the Scarlet House, Marianne Smith, 1835. So first I want to start by showing you a couple of finishes that are not completely finished yet, but I haven't shown them to you before. The first one is Eleanor Rigby, and this is by Blackbird Designs. I did this on 32 count linen. The linen's by Weeks Dye Works, and I used the called for floss. And I'm looking online for a chunky black frame, a big frame to put this piece in. And I think that based on the size, I should be able to frame this. All right. And the next one, this is, you know, I don't do a whole lot of um, seasonal stitching, but this is one that I did do. I love the fall. I love the autumn. We're going to start with upside down again, huh? Okay. This is by the Prairie Schooler, again, on a week's dye work, 32 count, and I used the called for DMC. This is called Harvest Time, and I, I live in Southern California. We don't get fall foliage like this, and this just reminds me so much of New England where I have a lot of family, and I love the colors. It reminds me a little bit of Pennsylvania, too, with the covered bridges. Um, I did live in Pennsylvania for seven years as a little girl. My father was in the Navy, so I lived in lots of different places, including Pennsylvania. And I just remember it was very pretty there. Okay, that's by Prairie Schooler. Now, I want to finish this in a flat fold. So I'm going to try Vonna Pfeiffer's tutorial. I did buy some fabric. And I think that's going to be having problems here. I think that's going to look good as a flat fold. We'll see. I've never made a flat fold before, but no time like the present, right? Um, okay, I want to show you some FFOs that I have framed right here. Um, the first one is by the um, Little House Needleworks, and it's called Early Americans. It's a big one. Now, this has museum glass on it, so you're getting, you know, if I go up, you can see a little bit of a glare, but not much glare. And this was framed by Total Framing. I, I love history, and this just speaks to my love of history, American history. And this is my first piece that I've made for my future patriotic wall. Now, if you go to Vonna Pfeiffer's website, she made a border, like a bunting border, um, that looks fabulous on this. I didn't do that because 
by the time I finished stitching it, I was just so anxious to get it framed and move on to the next one. I don't know. I always have this sense of urgency, like, okay, what's next? Okay, what's next? But Total Framing did a fabulous job, as always, on this. if I can put these down without a crash. Okay, the next one is huge because I did it on 28 count antique ivory. This is called the Rose Quaker Sampler by Weinenberg, W-I-E-H-E-N-B-U-R-G. Here we go, the Rose Quaker Sampler. I love the colors in this. I used all the called for DMC. And this to me is like a showstopper. You know, I when I sent it to Total Framing, I said this is a special piece and I want to frame. Um, that's that's going to show that this is a showstopper. Now, in retrospect, as I've progressed in my cross-stitch journey, I would have done this on 40 or 46 count versus 28 count because it is so large, but it is just a really special piece. You can hear Max walking around. He's afraid I'm gonna drop something. He always lays under my desk. Max is my dachshund and he always lays under my desk when I'm working or filming and uh, I think he thinks I'm going to drop something on him. Okay, so that was Rose Paper Sampler. Do you want to say hi? Come here. This is Max. You say hello. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So this is Max. He's five. He's a chocolate and tan dachshund and he's absolutely a sweetheart. And we just love him. And when I'm working or filming, he's always under my desk keeping me company. All right. So the next thing I want to show you is save the stitches. I see so many people, they find stitching in the Goodwill or a thrift store and they don't leave it behind and they save the stitching. Um, this past year, we had to move my mom out of her house, sell her home, and put her into an assisted living facility. In doing that, in, the, in, the, in her living room, and I have seen this for years and years, decades, I, I couldn't put this in the garage sale. I couldn't give it to Goodwill. So we saved it. Now, this is not something that I have made. This is something that a friend of my mother's made for her in the 80s or the 90s. And it's called Lady in Blue Dress. And it's based on the artwork of Sarah Moon. I also found it on the internet as Summer Wind. And, it, and the pattern's currently available on everything cross-stitch. But this was also a Lenarte kit. So one of my mom's really good friends made this and gave it to her in, I want to say the mid 80s. She loved doing Sarah Moon um, cross stitch, all different kinds of ladies for Sarah Moon. And um, so yeah, I, oh, I know what I wanted to tell you. If you watch Debbie from Creatively Yours, on floss tube. She's in the Netherlands. She has this in her background, but she has it in a round or oval frame. The first time I saw that, I'm like, I know that. My mom still had this at the time, but um, this is not going anywhere. It's staying in our family. It's beautiful, and I, I just can't see giving it up. It's, it's been in my mom's living room for decades, and unfortunately, she doesn't have room for it where she lives now. Okay, so I'm going to show you, sorry Max, he's nervous for good reason, um, 
So I'm going to show you some of the things that I worked on, but before I do that, I want to ask you, I'm sure some of you have experienced this. Have you lost your stitchy mojo where it's just like anything I picked up and I worked on, it was kind of, nah. It was a, that was the first time that it happened to me since I've come back to cross stitch two and a half, almost three years ago. Um, and I don't know if it was because I was working on whips I hadn't touched in 2022 and maybe there's a reason I hadn't touched them. Maybe I'm just not interested in them anymore. I'm not quite sure. I was working on Zimmerman coverlet and I'll show you and I made a mistake. And I just had to put that in time out. And, and then it just kind of went downhill from there for a little bit. I think I'm back now. But what do you guys do um, when you lose your stitchy mojo? What helps you get that back? I don't know. It was really bizarre not to want to stitch for a few days. I think I'm okay now. Um, so let me show you what I did work on. Um, I did work a little bit on, since I filmed last, Jane Hopkins, 1875. This is by Hands Across the Sea. And I am doing this on a 46 count XJU Design Light Hazelnut. And I'm using Suadege Silk, which, oh. Those roses, and I just love the detail and how the silk looks on the linen. This, it, this is gonna be a stunner when it's finished. So it's, four, you know what I said 46? I think it's 40, it's 40 count with the Suadege silk. Okay. And then I pulled out Ann Thomas. I haven't touched Ann Thomas at all this year. Ann Thomas, 1854 by Hands Across the Sea. This was in time out because I had made a mistake and I put my big girl panties on and I am moving forward and leaving the mistake in and I don't think you can tell. Usually I tear it out and, but not this time. So here we go. Let me get my notes and I can tell you exactly what I'm stitching this on. I am stitching this on 46 count up in the attic by Fox and Rabbit using a Verisoil 103 silk. One strand on 46 count. Now, where I'd stopped last time was right here. So during, I worked on this for nine days and I was able to get this and this. And oh, just the detail, the colors. This is going to be another showstopper, I think. I just, I love how the 103 looks on the 46 count linen. Yeah. I want to get back to that one. Okay, the Zimmerman coverlet. So that is by um, Modern Folk Embroidery. And let me find my notes. Zimmerman coverlet, I am stitching this on 36 count. No, I take that back. 40 count. 40 count ancient. I picture this plus, and I am using Mrs. Sadis Silk. She's in Spain, she has an Etsy store, and the colorway is Darling Blue. And I just think this is so, so pretty, um, but I had to put it in timeout because of the mistake that I made. And where is that mistake? <laughs> trying to remember it's over here I'm off over here yep that's why I stopped Let's see I should be doing this flower right here 
Um, it's something I can keep going on, and I think it's going to be fine. I don't think I don't know where the mistake is. I haven't been able to find it, and I think that's why I just put it aside and put it in timeout. It was frustrating, but I love how that looks. The blue silk on that ancient by Picture This Plus, really pretty. Okay, so I put Zimmerman coverlet in timeout because I had made a mistake and I thought, I'm gonna start something new. I'm gonna start the Smith Sampler by the Scarlet House. I've had this kitted up for a while. <clears throat> I kitted it up at the attic. They helped me pick the linen. The linen for it matches the, the sample hanging in the attic perfectly. So let me tell you what I started this on. I started it on 46 count oatmeal by Color and Cotton. And I'm using um, Belsois silk, Dinky Dyes, and Gloriana silk, okay? So I was so excited. And I have to say, Tanya does such a great job charting. Her charts are so easy to read and move from page to page. So this is my new start. And I started in the center. So... Pretty good start, right? I don't know why I did this, but I noticed there was a slub. And so I just cut it on the back. And I go back to stitching, and I'm really, really enjoying it. And I realize I have a hole in my linen now. Yeah, when I cut the slub, I cut some of the linen. Now I know how to fix that, so I was like, okay. I'm going to keep going because I do. I have fixed them. I know it will be okay. And I'm stitching along. And in the morning, I have coffee. And sometimes I have like a, a protein bar with my coffee in the morning. I am very careful. You know where I'm going with this. I'm very careful not to get the food on my hands. Or so I thought. And I'm stitching away. And now there's protein bar. So now I have a hole and protein bar on there. It's, it's definitely in timeout. I think I'm gonna ditch it and restart it because I love that sampler and I love how it looks so far. But that, between the, the mistake on the Zimmerman coverlet and the hole in the protein bar on the Smith sampler is like, okay, that's it. Things come in threes, right? And I'm like, okay, what else? I haven't, knock wood, hasn't happened yet. So then I moved on. So I, I continued on whips that I haven't started or haven't touched in 2022. And I went to Rose Ada Featherstone by Hands Across the Sea. This is such a fun stitch. And here she is. So when I started working on her again, I had started in the center, I had the tree and the cherubs and part of the house started. So I've done the house, my borders match, and this little motif. Now, I haven't finished the house. I was anxious to, I was getting kind of tired of stitching that color. So I did the roof and went up to the border and wanted to get my border done and matched. And so I think, you know, if I, if I like really worked on this, I could finish it by the end of the year. So I have that in the back of my head. Is that what I want to do? I don't know, but um, such pretty colors on this. And what am I stitching this on? That would be nice to tell you, wouldn't it? Okay. Rose Ada Featherstone. I am stitching her on 46 count antique lace by Seraphim. And I'm using the um, Avera Soie 103 silk, which I just love. Okay. All right, so the next one that I pulled out of my whips that I haven't touched in 2022 is Hoity Toity by Long Dog Samplers. Oh. I don't know why I didn't touch this one this year. I love this. Okay, 
So the border is finished. But you'll notice the colors on the bottom are different than the colors on the top. And I showed this in my first floss tube. I only had the border done, not even filled in, just a lot of the black border, but I had done the bottom. Now, the bottom, I'm using the silk conversion by Mrs. Sadis Silk again, and this is specific to Hoity Toity. And it's beautiful. Then I saw at Summer School 2021, there goes one of my frames. Um, at Summer School 2021, I saw um, Lisa, Kindred Stitcher. She had hoity toity in the called for DMC. And I was like, oh, that's really beautiful too. And so now I've got both on there. I think I'm going to continue moving forward with the DMC. The Mrs. Sadis is just as beautiful. I think I just prefer the D called for DMC. And uh, this is what I'm currently stitching on, and I absolutely love it. It's hoity-toity. One moment, please. I know that doesn't make for good floss tube, does it? And then I also worked a little bit on the Scarlet House, A Changed World. This is typically my travel pattern um, because I'm working it on a hoop. Everything else that I work at home is on a lap frame or a la um, or stand. Um, I'm a two-handed stitcher, except of course when I'm working um, in a hoop. And here's my progress so far on a changed world. Now, let me tell you what I'm stitching this on. By the way, hoity-toity, let me just go back to that. That is 36 count. So this is something I started earlier in my stitching journey. 36 count antique white. And I'm just using the called for DMC on that one. On a changed world, this is by the Scarlet House. It's a 46 count. Um, I'm not sure which fabric this is, but I'm using the Swell 103 silk. And it just sits so beautifully on that 46 count linen. Okay. All right, I want to share with you. Um, some antique samplers that I've acquired. Now, I, I still am stitching Euphemia Michi. That's my first one that I'm reproducing. There's not much that going on right now because of work. Fourth quarter is, um, I, I don't have much time to do anything but work and then I just wanna stitch what I wanna stitch. Um, so let me show you the first antique sampler. This is Margaret Williams. 1840 and she did this when she was 13 years old so margaret williams 1840 what attracted me to this sampler of course is the red right but there's a house and there's what looks like to be a castle can you see that and i love the border and the motif Oh, just totally speaks to me. So this is one that I will be reproducing. I took it out of the frame. I do still have the frame. Um, I took it out of the frame to see if I could take a peek at the back. No, I'm not. I'm not chancing it. And I'm going to chart it from the front and just do the best I can. So there's that one. And the second one I want to show you is a Dutch sampler. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the little girl's name. Here we go. 
this did come in its frame and that frame was falling apart. It had been eaten up by something. Um, this is a Dutch sampler from 1864. And um, someone recommended I should just uh, send an email to Jacob at Modern Folk Embroidery and see if he can confirm it's a Dutch sampler. The person I bought it from said it's a Dutch sampler from 1864. Jacob was very kind and he responded to my email and said he was 99% certain that this is a Dutch sampler, probably from the central or eastern provinces, may, most likely Gelderland, and I'm sure that's not how to pronounce it. It's G-E-L-D-E-R-L-A-N-D. -E -E he said that on the initials, most likely the dad is B. K D right there and mom is MLV but unfortunately I don't have the little girl's name just initials but I think this is going to be so much fun to chart and to stitch I just love the motifs and the, the pictures look at the border this was in its original frame. It was nailed down. You can see that. I am not taking this off of the board. I'm going to chart it with the colors in the front, which I think are pretty well preserved, considering this is 158 years old. Okay. So those I will get to eventually as far as um, charting them and making them available for you to stitch them as well. So plans. I still want to continue with whips that I haven't touched in 2022, and those would be Pandemic by Long Dog Sampler, Harbor Haven, that I am stitching over one think on a 32 count. It looks great, but it's tiny. Uh, Shores of Hawk Run Hollow. That one I'm stitching on 36 count using two strands of thread. Hoity toity, I'm using one strand, and I love how that looks. The coverage I feel like could be a little bit better. So I definitely get the coverage by doing two strands of DMC on the 36 count but my stitches aren't as pretty. So, um, but I'm not restarting it. I'm way too far in on Shores of Hawk Run Hollow. I'd like to restart the Smith Sampler. Or like I said, do I hit one project and just work hard um, through the end of the year and have another finish? I don't have many finishes this year because I do work on such big projects. Um, or do I just stitch what I want? I don't know. Right now, it's hoity-toity, so I'm going to continue stitching on hoity-toity probably for another week, and then I'll see where I'm at on that. Um, I'm really excited because I'm working on, I haven't touched it yet, but I've ordered the, the materials. It's something that combines my love of scrapbooking and cross-stitch, and when I put it all together, I will show you um, what that is, but I'm really excited because I haven't scrapbooked much lately in quite a few years, and I still have all my supplies, and it's calling to me lately. So we'll see. All right, I want to show you some haul that I got, and then we're going to get to the giveaway. All right, so I found linen on Hobby House Needlework, um, Needleworks. This is 40 Count American Chestnut by R&R. &R. I've never been able to find this, and I was so excited. I got a nice big piece of American chestnut, 40 count, like, like I need any more linen, right? But you got to have options, you know? When you're kidding things up, you got to have options. This I am really excited about. So I was watching Colorado Cross Stitcher. And um, this is by Reflet de Soie. And it's a calendar. 
Sorry for the crinkle. Here we go. I'm going to open this. Usually I have everything open. Um, it's a calendar by Reflet de Soie. Of course, everything's in French. My mother is French, so she could she could um, decipher something if I'm having trouble deciphering it. She didn't she didn't teach us French. I grew up listening to French with her side of the family. Everybody spoke French, but unfortunately, the French is lost with my generation. None of my cousins or siblings really speak French fluently. Anyway, so this is a calendar, but it's it's similar to the Book of Days. Now, I'm, I'm getting the Book of Days because I still use this, but I'm going to put this calendar here, and um, I love it that it's got samplers for each month. And she gives you stickers, and I'm all about the stickers from my Book of Days, and a pencil. So I was excited to get that calendar. Again, I got that from um, um, Colorado Cross Stitcher. Now, when you talk about stickers, I was on a conference call this week um, where I just had to listen. And so I pulled out my Book of Days, and I pulled out my sticker books, and I got ready for November. I didn't leave much room for stitching, so I hope this isn't a premonition that... Uh, I'm going to lose my stitchy mojo again. I don't think so. I'll just have to write really small. But I got a little carried away, especially when you look at October, where it's pretty minimal. <laughs> but there you go. There's November. And here is December. So, yeah, I like filling those pages up with stickers now. Um, okay, so I did order some um, patterns you know I don't order just can't just order linen or the calendar by itself so um, this came from Colorado cross stitcher as well this is hands-on design stitch some happy modern folk embroidery this I bought at Hobby House and the fruits of plenty this was a stitch along in 2021 I've seen so many of these finished on floss tube. They are gorgeous. It's not something I'm gonna start right now because I have so many things kitted up that I wanna start. Um, one that's really calling to me, in addition to the Smith Sampler by the Scarlet House, is also um, the old Scott by Hands Across the Sea. Now, Teresa Kitten Stitcher had a limit or has a limited edition um, pattern from Hands Across the Sea Samplers, and it's Margaret Doyle 1850. I bought the pattern. I did not kit it up, but if you wanted to kit it up, I know originally uh, Teresa had various fabrics and floss. I'm not sure if she still does, but um, this is uh, exclusive to Kitten Stitcher. I got this also from Sherry, Colorado Cross Stitcher, hands-on design, stitch in the garden. I love this little pillow. That's, you know, I'm, I don't know about you all, but I'm starting to think about plans for um, 2023. And I have so many big projects. And I have so many patterns I want to stitch for small. So do I only do smalls? Nah, I don't think I can do that. I think, I, but I got, I've got to find a way to work them in because there's so many cute um, biscornu, biscornu. Say there, mm, I don't have French. Okay. Um, I discovered, and this is probably old news to many of you. No, oh, I didn't write it down. Is it the 18? Wait, 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 wait. No. Shoot. Here it is. 1884 Stitchery. I discovered that website, and I know I'm behind the times because probably all of you know about that. But I ordered um, a couple of things. I've got some PDFs also that I didn't print out, but I ordered um, Jane Foster, 1885. And what I think, um, I'm sorry, I can't remember the lady who runs this website, but she gets permission to reprint out of print 
uh, patterns, and I think this is one of them. And I'm sorry if I'm stating that wrong. I just buy what I like, and uh, I love this sampler. I also bought, now this took me way, way back. This is, um, oh, sampler, traditional sampler kit, counted cross stitch, inspired by samplers admired in museums. Okay, and it's by Maura Blackburn. Look at that sampler. What takes me back, it's charted by hand. I don't think I've stitched by a pattern that is charted by hand for 30 years. It's very clear. It's not going to be a problem, but it just takes me back. But look at that beautiful, beautiful sampler. Look at that border. So I'm excited about that. Um, this is the Jane Harris Sampler. Um, it's by McIntosh Samplers, McIntosh. And it also came from the 1884 Stitchery. I love the motifs in these flowers. You know, I'm all about a Scottish sampler and this has so many things like a Scottish sampler does. And then I have a few PDFs, Jane Ballard um, and Hannah Lancaster. So I will print those out and show you in this future floss tube. Um, she also had this, a Santa Claus um, pattern that I just thought was so cute. So maybe I need to start stitching seasonal. But I just loved Santa and the reindeer floating away in balloons. And then I purchased this. I think I got this at Hobby House. Um, I'm not quite sure. But I've seen this a lot at, on Floss Tube and McFarland Sampler 1827. It is just so unique. I wanted to have it in my collection. Okay. That's it for my haul. Now, on to the giveaway. You may recall that last time I said in your comments, say the word Smith, be entered in the giveaway for the Scarlet House Marianne Smith 1835. I purchased two of these. Actually, I got one from summer school, and then last year when I was at the attic, last year, last August when I was at summer school, I bought another one and realized I already had it. So um, the winner is, after 87 entries, Stitching Runner. Stitching Runner, you're the winner of the Marianne Smith Sampler. I've already commented on your comment. You said in your comment to me, just came across your channel and glad I did. Love all of the sampler information. Smith would be a fabulous stitch. So... Stitching Runner, please get a hold of me. My email is paisleystitcher at gmail.com. Um, it's also in my floss tube um, in the drop down box. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for coming back and commenting and um, joining me on this journey. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you soon. Bye.